Hello, hello, good afternoon. Is anybody there? Uh, let's have a look at the screen. Put the comments up, Paul, it helps. Don't be shy if you're sat there listening to me chat away to myself. Say hello in the comments. So, good afternoon. Uh, it is afternoon. I normally do these things earlier. My name is Paul Gregory and I am a professional food photographer. And the lovely guys at Canon and Camera World have asked me, hello Lynn, hello Alex, hello Paul, hello Camera World, thank you. Yes, I wasn't gonna make a big thing of the fact that today's my birthday, but hello Camera World. Um, Dave, good afternoon. Julie, good afternoon. Paul, good afternoon. No dry ice today, buddy, no dry ice today. Uh, <laughs> a bit bored of dry ice now. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos with other, um, oh, on my Instagram and stuff like that, you'll see that I have a bit of a thing for dry ice. But no dry ice today, Paul. I apologise, fella. Stephanie, hi. How are you? Michelle, hello. So, I'm Paul Gregory, a professional food photographer. Camera World and Canon have very kindly invited me here today to uh, talk to you about product photography using available light. Yes, I photograph food. Food is a product. Stuff you put food on is also products. Plates, you know, bowls, forks, cutlery, glasses, you know, they are products. So we've gone down that route. We're going to be looking at product photography with cutlery and the sort of stuff you would find with food. So, absolutely, yeah. We're going to do some. Um, Martin, hello, what am I shooting today? I've just mentioned it, we are doing product photography still life in a lifestyle styling. Um, using available light, as you can see, um, lovely big kitchen area today to use, which is fantastic. Thank you to my lovely partner for allowing me to take over her kitchen for an hour or so. Um, so behind me, you're gonna see bits and pieces behind me. I'm gonna talk you through what we've got. Um, anybody that comes in, hello Stuart, how you doing fella? Um, so yes, anybody that comes in, I'm just going to crack on and say hi to you, but we're going to get on with what we're going to do. So I am currently talking to you via the wonders of a Canon PowerShot G7X Mark III. That's my filming camera. Uh, for those of you that have seen my lives before, the earlier ones, because I did some with Camera World back in May and June of last year, a um, few technical issues, so we've gotten around that. I have a, a dedicated filming camera, and over my head, you'll see I've got my 5D Mark IV mounted on the boom arm. Um, <laughs> do you know what? I hate putting things up there, but it's fine. It's tight, it's solid, it's fine. Um, we are live, guys, so anything could happen, and it normally does. Um, hi, Karen. Good afternoon. Right, so I'm going to let you have a little look at what we have going on. I'm gonna, I can see your comments. My MacBook is here, so if I'm looking down here, I'm looking at my MacBook, looking at the comments that you guys are making. Questions, drop them into the comments, yeah? If, um, if it's a kit question, the guys at Camera World may be able to answer it. I will tell you what I'm using. If it's a more kind of technical question, if I can't get to it during the live, I will go back through the comments with a cup of coffee and a piece of birthday cake afterwards. <laughs> and. Um, answer your question, so don't panic. I'll apologise if I don't get to everything, but we all know that men can't multitask, so me talking, breathing, and thinking, and taking pictures is enough, let alone looking at a um, at screen. So, let's get stuck in. I'm just going to move my Mac, so I don't knock it over. Not the greatest view, and I'm gonna move my sitting stool. And let's see. I'm going to whoop. Sorry for those of you who get travel sick. So here is my set. Okay. To the left of my set is a mahusive window. It's floor to ceiling nearly. Lovely, lovely light for what we are doing. Let's just widen that view a little bit. So here we have my 5D Mark IV with its 50mm 1.2 mounted on it. You see I've got a tethering lead coming out of the side of the camera, going across the Manfrotto boom arm and trading under the table nice and safe to my MacBook because I'm tethering. So you can be able to see what I'm physically doing kind of here. 
but you'll also be able to see what's going on through here. I'll flick between the live camera and the EOS. Okay, so that's what's going to happen. Um, you will see in front of us, I have, oh, I can't frame that up straight. It looks like the camera's had a one glass of water too many. Right, so, just focusing it. So, plates. Um, I've got some plates, I've got some glasses, I've got um, some fabric and some cutlery, because this is the sort of thing you would see if you were looking at a, um, a set of cutlery, a set of um, kitchenware in a, on a website. You know, you'd see kind of still life product shots like this if you were looking at this sort of stuff online, looking to purchase. So yeah, this, there we go, side angle. It's my best side as well. So this is what we've got. So I've purposely, in the background, does Camera World have a tether cable? Well, that's a good question for Camera World. Do you have tether cables? Um, generally, in your boxes of your cameras, when you get your cameras, and I'm talking specifically Canon here, because this is a Canon event, um, you will get the USB cable and connection cable in the box, which will allow you to plug it into your laptop and you can tether. Um, I'm tethering using a piece of software called Canon EOS Utility. It's Canon EOS Utility 3, which is what works with the Mark IV, and I believe the R5, the R6, the RP, and the R. So, but if you go onto the Canon website, you can um, go into their support pages, have a look at the, um, uh, you can drop your camera model into a drop down menu. It'll pick up automatically what operating system you're using on your laptop or your desktop. That's when you're searching from, and it will tell you which version you need to download. But EOS Utility 3 is awesome. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's so simple to use. Brilliant. But no, I mean, you, uh, the cables that come in the box are about 1.8 meters long. This bad boy is about, uh, I think it's either 5 or 10 meters. I can't remember. Looks more like 10 than 5. But um, yeah, so stuff. I've got all shadowy. It's the only thing we're working with available light, boys and girls. It does tend to change quite a bit. So, yes. So, I'm going to get off my Valdunican stool in a second, and we're going to have a little look at what's going on here. Uh, <laughs> if you don't know who Valdunican is, ask your mum. So, yeah, this is the setup. We have a white board behind us. This is one of my homegrown DIY backgrounds. It's one by 1.25 meters to be precise. It's a bit of five mil ply, which I've then um, created back and frame around the back. So one, two, three, four, five. Um, screwed it together, glued it as well to be safe, belt and braces, ladies and gents. And then I put tile adhesive on it. Very slapdash, very kind of textured and just go for it. Leave it to go off overnight. 24 hours, something like that, and then you paint it. And I've got this lovely textured look. You may not see this. You won't see this in the shot we're going to do because we're going to be, as you can see, we're shooting overhead and shoot the top down, flat lay, however you want to um, describe it. End of the day, the camera's pointing down parallel on your subject, and that's really important that it's parallel. So that's the um, background board. That's there just feeding a bit of light back, to be honest with you, and to cover what's in the background. <laughs> After half the, you're not going to have all my stuff in the background. I said, no, no, darling, I'll put the board up. It's fine. She was happy. So it's not that bad, actually. On the front here, I have a uh, roll-out vinyl background. It's like a um, vintage, aged, worn white tabletop. And these things are great. There's lots of places online that, um, that you can get them from. Sorry, I've just seen... Lynn Stevens Tate, good day from us. Good day. What time is it there? I know it's like ten past t ten past midday here. What time is it there, Lynn? Welcome. Are you staying up to watch me, or have you gotten up early? Um, so yeah, thank you. That's dedication. So here we go. This is your setup. I'm going to now kind of move the camera a little bit. We're going to look at um, what's going on through the camera. 
A couple of key things to note. So you're going to lose me for a minute, so I apologise. I'm going to step out of frame. So the Mark IV is a 50mm f1.2. I prefer to, prefer to use prime lenses for this with low aperture values for one specific reason. Your subject is so close to your background, your surface area, yeah? Something with a very large aperture capability, something, you know, wide aperture, low aperture value, your f1.8, 1.4, 1.2, something like that is going to allow you to show a difference between the subject and your background, okay? I'll just show you how close that actually is. Sorry if those of you get travel sick. Go. So you can see my finger in relation to that plate, it's what? It's there. So that's not much room. Um, for depth of field, yeah, yes, you will struggle f2.8, f4 to get any differ differ differentiation, even, put your teeth in, Paul, between the rim of this plate or this plate here and your background surface, your, back, your shooting surface, your background board, yeah? So by shooting, when I'm shooting top down, flat lay, whatever you want to call it, I tend to use a prime lens with a very fast aperture, a fast lens, so I get a decent, um, decent amount of lack of depth of field. Oh, Janet, we won't tell you, Janet Miles is in Somerset and she's sneakily watching whilst working from home, yes, working from home, inverted commas, we won't tell Janet, we won't tell. Uh, Lynn, 11 o'clock, that's not too bad, staying up. Thank you, Lynn, I appreciate you staying up to watch us. So, this is your set. I'm going to hopefully do two sets for you. If we get through this in good time, which I'm hoping we will, then um, I'll be able to do two sets for you, one of which will be like this, one of which will be more kind of head-on, if you like. So we won't be flat lay. We'll be shooting as this camera is shooting that way. Okay, so we're doing more of a three-quarter head-on shot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the camera on. Because I'm very good at leaving the switch on and the battery's going, uh, no. So this is set up. I set this up about, started to set up about 10 o'clock this morning. Because those of you who have ever tried to shoot top-down like this, Oh, chair legs. There you go. Any of you that have tried to shoot top down like this will know that when you're trying, if you, you know, if you're up on your stool or your step ladder and you haven't got a boom arm like this or a C stand that allows you to do this, you can look down. If you're holding your camera and you're looking down, you're holding your camera, you think, oh, that doesn't look right. You move the camera a bit, and then you lose your composition. Then you put the camera down, and you move the plate. This plate needs to go this way a bit. You need to move that that way a bit, yeah? And then you go back to shooting like this, and it's all gone. So you need to start again. It's very frustrating, very time-consuming. This is the boom arm with a Manfrotto um, head on it and a plate you can get that just goes on there uh, to hold the, uh, the tripod head on there. Very important. A lot of people just put their cameras directly onto the arm of whatever they're using. Doesn't give you much flexibility. Yeah, think of this as, as a big horizontal tripod, and they're great. Doing this at home, you don't need four grand's worth of camera kit and lens. You don't need a boom arm. If you are organised enough, I know I said earlier it's a bit of a nightmare, you know, getting up on your stool and looking down and all that kind of jazz. But if you are actually a bit organised, and you have an extra pair of hands with you, or if your camera shoots tethered, so I said most, the majority of the Canon DSLRs give you the, the cable in the box, you can go from there. Use the OS utility, my laptop is down here. I can look like this and go there, and that is what I did to set this up. So if you're doing this at home and you haven't got anything fancy like this, um, some tripod, the Manfrotto tripod that I use, the 055 Pro X, has a... center column, which way, that way, it goes horizontal. So you can do that, but if you're going to do a flat lay, your subject would then have to be on the floor, or you'd have to have a very low table. 
But that's the other way you can do it. The other way you can do it, as I said, is you can stand up on a stepladder or a stool or a chair. Safety first, guys. Please make sure it is safe. No liability on myself if you fall off a chair. <laughs> and, um, yeah, you can do that. And if you've got your laptop within viewing distance, you can be, right, seeing this, and you can be on your laptop seeing what's going on, and you can then be adjusting your camera as you go. Because live view, tethered, brilliant, absolutely awesome. I tend to use live view 9.999 times out of 10 um, when I'm shooting through a laptop because it just makes my life very easy. And then all your images go directly to your laptop if that's what you choose to do. So let's have a look at how this looks. Let's just now. So this is our scene. This is directly through the camera. You are seeing what the camera is seeing, okay? So I like tight crops. I do. It's just how I work. So you've got the central, you've got the plates in the centre there. You've got a knife and fork to the left hand side. You've got the tablecloth to the right, to the left hand side. A uh, little plate, a couple of glasses. Some just coming into shot from the top and the and the back. Have you chosen the odd rock position? Ian, no, do you know what? I don't tend to use, yeah, rule of thirds, bits and pieces like that. I just use what I feel comfortable with and what I feel looks nice. I like to have things in the centre of the frame to bring your eye to it. Um, I also like to have things kind of coming in from the corners and the sides of the frame just to add a little bit of interest. Um, I don't have a specific rule I use. Yeah, rule of thirds. I love triangular composition. Um, yeah, it's just, I suppose it is what it is. I might be using um, compositional rules without actually knowing, to be honest with you. But I just do what I do and it works for me. Um, I, I am conscious always of the depth of field. I'm always conscious when the point of focus is. I'm always conscious that things aren't too close or too heavy, which is why the, the smaller, lighter looking objects are at the top of the frame here. And, you know, the heavier two plates on one on the bottom right hand corner and the plate on the left hand corner, that's there. Obviously, if you look at the top right hand corner of the image, that's the bowl, that's the cereal bowl. And that is, um, obviously, it's light inside. It's right next door to the window. The sun is now deciding to come out. It was flat as a flat thing this morning at so the light. When I set this up, it was absolutely horrible. And now the sun's decided to poke out. So that's good. We can think on our feet and work with it. So yeah, this is where we're at. So what I'm going to do, let's go back into utility. EOS Utility 3, right. Don't want to do a system update on this software right now. So now you can see my window. I'm assuming you can see my little um, my little box. It's come back. So here we are. We've got the box 20 of a second, f4.5 low, which I said is ISO 50. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick shot. Put that scenes box out of the way. Other functions, quick preview. Right, so for some reason that is inverted, which is great. Just going to move this out of the way because I don't need that there. So, look at that. It's blown out as you like, isn't it? It's so blown out, it's not true. So we go back into EOS Utility. Close that bit. Back to my desktop. And I can't take the ice only lower. No way, no how. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to f5.6. And I might actually... I'm gonna, what we're going to do, we're going to get this balanced first. So I'm going to go 5.6 at 40th. That's a little bit better. Okay, so that's getting more to what we want. My issue is that it's not, if you look to the right hand side of the frame, obviously this for some reason is inverted. I'm not gonna mess around and try to turn it 90 degrees clockwise because I've got the sound right, I've got everything else right now. 
Um, so what we're going to do, if you bear in mind that the right hand side is the bottom of the frame and the left hand corner is the top of the frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually, I'm going to put a little piece of board in here because all I've got is literally, I've, as you've seen, I've got a white board to this section of the here, white board to the section here. Yeah, it's nothing here, nothing here. This is your window. Okay, so I'm going to take some foam board. It's going to go here and here. So it's going to go across the right hand edge and the bottom corner. And that's going to bounce a little bit more light in. I'm moving, guys. Apologies if the sound goes. I've got a radio mic on, fresh batteries in it. So let's see how we go. So I'm just putting in now. This whiteboard and that's going to throw back quite a bit of light specifically into that cutlery I'm going to be talking about reflective surfaces in a couple of weeks with you guys on the camera world Facebook page again so a couple of weeks I'm doing uh, reflective product photography with you so, oops. so I'm just crouching down on my laptop so let's now take the shot again right look at that highlight that's bounced back in to that top right hand corner so top right hand corner you know it's you've got that light coming in there's more reflection on the cut through at the bottom um yeah looking good i'm loving if anything it's a little blown across here so i'm going to go back into eos utility and i'm just going to adjust that slightly i cannot this is my issue okay um the light is now so blooming bright that I can't do anything with it. Um, I would want to be around, I'd want to be lower than f2.8. And earlier on this morning when the sun was not out, um, it was great. I was down to f1.4, it's fantastic. So yeah, we have an issue now. So we're gonna be at f5.6. Let's just, let's just live with that, okay? Um, if I had them available, I would be putting a neutral density filter onto the front of my lens now, or a polarizing filter onto the front of my lens. That would then limit the amount of light coming into the lens, which would then force me to either extend my shutter speed, so go with a, a slower shutter speed, because the filters will be letting less light in, um, or drop my aperture value, which is what I want to achieve. I would want to get my aperture value down lower. Oh, and the sun's gone in. Uh, <laughs> to allow me to get a shallower depth of field. So let's just do that. So I've just, the sun's gone in, I've dropped the aperture down to 3.5, blowing a little bit there. But you get the idea. Oh, comments, who's that, who's that, who's that? Must have missed why you're keeping the slow shutter speed. Um, ambient, Paul, basically, I'm balancing here. Um, I like the ambient. We can adjust the um, adjust the aperture. I just love the ambient glow. Let's have a little look at what we're doing though. I'm going to just take this back down because the the, um, the the sunlight's dropped again. So quick shot, and the sun's come out. So you get the idea, yeah. Um, let's go back into this. So let's go up. I'm going to go down to three stops, F two stops, F2. So that's going to take me down to the. Da, 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 da. Let's go to 25th. Shoot. Quick preview. Right, we're getting there. So this is the thing, working with available light, you get all this, you have to work quickly and things will change, but I'm kind of thinking that what we've got is looking pretty good. I'm just gonna stop that down by about a third of a stop because I'm liking that as it stands. Let's go back into the screen so you can see the shot straight away. That's better. That is so much better. Um, Raw file can be tweaked. I've just realized that 
it's a bit wonky, but that again, that can be tweaked in the post. So any apart from the fact that you've not been able to hear me, apart from the fact that, you know, <laughs> white noise, camera angle, light, and um, who was it that pointed it out? Paul, thank you for um, helping me out there. <laughs> when your brain is focused on trying to fix the problem. But no, with the aperture priority, I would have gone, it, as I changed the aperture, yes, it would have automatically changed the shutter speed. Um, I was trying to get a little bit more of a, um, an ambient feel to it, a bit more kind of ambient, um, slightly overexposed from the ambient, but obviously that didn't work. But here we are now. I'm quite happy with that. I think the uh, I think that could sell stuff quite happily. Um, maybe when we crop this, I'm going to lose a little bit of this top top right because I'm going to twist it and you know, it's going to come level here. Going to lose a little bit there, which I like. We're going to lose a little bit here, which I also like. But do you know what? Landscape or portrait, it'll work either way. Portrait or landscape, it'll work either way. Uh, it was meant to be a landscape image, but with the joys of uh, technology, it's gone portrait. That's fine. Obviously, we can we can tweak that in the post. Any questions, anything you want to ask or put out there? Right, Zoe, good question. My ISO is so low is I am a control freak. Um, when I'm shooting food, I like to have as much of my, oh, I want the better qualities I can get. So by shooting with a lower ISO value, you get, it's not a better resolution, but you avoid the risk of noise, especially in low light situations. I've shot things outside at night previously, uh, portraits outside at night, and I won't go any, any higher than 200. Just because, um, you get a better quality. The higher ISO goes, especially in, bright and, in brighter lighting, brighting, brighter lighting conditions even, um, your noise increases. Now we've got very light products, very light backgrounds here, very light subjects. And the second you take this over 800, something like that, it's gonna start to get noisy and, and muzzy and grainy and look a little bit dirty and just not have that clarity. I like to go for the lowest ISO physically possible. As you may have seen earlier, my camera is mounted high on a boom arm. It's solid, it's steady, it's not going anywhere. So the risk of camera shake is negligible, especially because I'm controlling through the laptop. So are we good with that so far? Thank you, Paul. It would look good on a journalist page. I like that. Or any other retailer that sells this. Uh, Stuart, hang on, uh, just come back on why such a low F number, um, 125, not going to move, I would rather, right, okay Derek, good shout, um, what we talked about earlier, and I've just realised why my mic sounded funny, my, um, my little, um, muffler has fallen off, I've just found that on the floor, um, right Derek, so, just come on, why such a low F number, uh, 125th for second, not going to move. I would rather get a better depth of field. Absolutely, with you on that. Um, situation is we are parallel, this is a flat lay. Okay, so the camera is parallel to the subject, it's looking straight down. There's very little, very little distance between that. If you look at the bottom plate in the center, there's very little distance between that bottom plate in the center and the surface it sat on. Where possible, I want to try and lose as much of that background as possible. Yes, you can go in and do it in, in your post-production and do it that way. But for me, I would rather, I try to get everything done in camera in the first place. So this is where we're going with this. So I would generally try and get down to as low a rest stop as I physically can. Sorry, kneeling on the floor for my old knees isn't very good. Um, so I try and go for the lower rest stop I can possibly achieve. I see what you mean about um, about the shutter speed and depth of field. Just for this, something like this with the distance that the, those subjects are from that background. <sighs> Anything higher than f2.8, it's just to be honest with you, you know, it's, I wouldn't do it. I don't think it's I don't think it's relative. But that's me. We all have our own way thing, our own ways of doing it. But there we go. Um, 
Stuart, would you aim to level the lines on? Yes, I would, but I knocked the tripod that the camera was sitting on about 30 seconds before I went live with you guys. So my apologies for that. I'll sit on the floor now. I'm doing a cross-legged um, lotus position thing. Right. Uh, would you, right, John Clayton. John, if using artificial light, would you prefer a flash or constant? Right. I'm a flash boy. I love my flash. I love studio flash because I'm control freak. Either or, um, I know a lot of guys that shoot food, a lot of, sorry, a lot of photographers, that's BPC, a lot of people that shoot food that prefer to use a continuous light source rather than flash. I'm a control freak, as I said, I have a continuous light source. I have a uh, Roto Light Neo 2, which I absolutely adore, and I used in my previous um, lives with you guys on Camera World. So, I love it. Um, flash for me, if I've got stuff that's, if I'm using motion, so I'm pouring sauces or grating cheese onto something or sprinkling chocolate powder or icing sugar, then the flash is going to freeze that motion. There is no, excuse me, hard and fast way of doing it. You know, at least with daylight, you can see what's going on. With flash, you've got your modeling light unless you're using speed lights. And therefore, you don't have modeling lights. So you're not going to be able to see exactly what is going on. Um, consistent light and daylight, con continuous light and daylight, yes, you're going to see where the reflections are. You're going to see where the highlights are. You're going to see where the shadow areas are. So having a continuous light source is great. And actually, to be fair, as we've seen this morning, the sun's just gone behind a big cloud again now, so it's dropped about three stops in light. Um, you are going to find that with your continuous light source, you know what you're doing. You don't have to worry about it going up and down like I've been messing around with earlier this morning. Yeah, this afternoon even. Um, horses for courses, my friend. I love artificial light. I love flash. I do love that rotor light Neo 2 though. I do love it. They have their purposes. Um, when I'm out shooting, uh, well, when I was out shooting cookbooks, when I can get out and shoot cookbooks again on clients' locations, I take that with me because it's a it's a fantastic bit of kit and it just it's small, it's compact, it goes in my kit bag, and it's very easy to get a really good quality of light in a small confined space. So, hope that helps, or have I just dodged the question? Zoe, I was just thinking, nudge that up instead of change. Yeah, no, with you 100%. So Zoe asked earlier why I was at such a low ISO, um, because I'm a control freak. Um, no, to be honest with you, something like that, yeah, I wouldn't absolutely 100% take it up a stop, two stops, 100, 200, whatever, but I probably wouldn't go any higher than 400 and absolute max when you're doing something like this. Stuart, hello Stuart, with the light coming through the window, as it was when, as it was, hang on, with the light coming through the window, as it, as it is, where would you put the board to reflect back distance height from subject? Right, let's show you, let's go back to the camera and show you where the stuff is, because at the minute, you are not seeing, so let's go back to my, I've got so many windows open. Video source, video source, video source. I want the, oh, there you are. So you can now see, yeah? So I'm just gonna try and show you, let's bring it wide. <laughs> Using a tripod as a monopod, excellent. So, that's not working, is it? Let's have a look. So, there's your scene. Yeah. And you can see the, hold it still if I can. So the bowl that was in the top left, as we saw it corner, is about eight inches from the big white board that was there in the first place, a big bit of uh, plywood and, um, tile plaster painted. The plate on the opposite side to that is no more than about two inches from the board, which is here. And then this one here, you can see the sort of distance that I would say he's looking over. 
the corner of the tea towel is about two inches again. Does that work for you, Stuart? Anything else on that? Let's take it out, actually. Crunch. So yeah, this was about there. If you can see that, Stuart, if that makes sense. You've all gone quiet. Please tell me my microphone's gone again. Excellent. Fantastic. So that's that. That's the product shot using available light from a decent, you know, from a, from a flat lay. Okay. Now there is one more thing I was hoping to do with you. We've got about 15 minutes. Are there any burning questions regarding what we've talked about here before I quickly move on and try something a little bit different? Great. Thank you, Nick. Just engrossed. Thank you, Angela. Can I quote you on that? Um, great to see the overhead view. Something about shooting overhead. Good behind the scenes to explain. Brilliant. Thank you very much, sir. Um, those of you who saw the first one of these I did for uh, Camera World a while ago, May last year, um, you will see how much I've uh, improved at doing this live stuff. I'm not a video person. I'm a stills man. So this was a bit of a uh, interesting thing for me to do. So what we're going to do is hopefully not crash around too much and ruin my other half's crockery that I bought for Christmas because it would put me in the shed tonight. We don't have a dog, so it won't be the dog house. And the cat's basket is too small for her, let alone me. So I'm going to go a little bit different and we're going to take the camera off of so I'm just putting stuff out of the way. Sweeping the coffee, sorry. Amazing, sorry, that was probably sounded horrible. It's amazing how talking can make your uh, make you so dry. So let's bring those out of the way. I'm gonna bring some more products into shop. We've got 15 minutes. Camera world, if I run over by about five, are you gonna be upset with me? Silence. Well, let's see where we go. If we run over by five, I'm sure camera world won't mind. So I'm just going to put myself a little something in here. Um, the camera is coming off of the boom arm. If you hear a clatter and a crash and I go, ah, it's all right, Canon. It's my lens. It's not yours. Let's just move the boom arm out of the way without trash in place. I've got a very large weight on the back of the boom arm to prevent it from um, toppling. But of course, the second I take the camera off of the boom arm, it becomes unbalanced. Let's just take that weight off. Bear with me. I don't really want that to clatter mid shot. So I'm just going to move the camera, this camera, to one side. And the sun's done its amazing thing of coming out to play again. So my tripod and I'm going to put on the camera now uh, 100mm f 2.8L macro lens doesn't need to be used for macro it's a beautiful portrait lens it's great for food photography it's great for so much stuff the perspective you get from this lens because it's 100mm is absolutely stunning the 50mm is near enough what our, our eyes see as human beings I think the human I is about 44.42 mil or something like that. Um, so 50 mil is what we see pretty much. And what we get here, this is hopefully, is a different shot completely. I'm just going to set this up. Apologies, it can't be set up pre um, live, but obviously. I was using the set, so that's really not helpful. You're know, doing something like that. So let's just push him in there and him in there. Now, I am a food photographer, and as much as I tried, I couldn't not put food in. So you're going to get cake. And as it's my birthday, I think I'm allowed cake. It's fine. So let's just move that a little bit on there. 
100 mil is a little tight on this, but that's fine. So I'm just gonna set this up. Yeah, and we're gonna ignore the hole in the front of the board. All right, go back now to my EOS. <laughs> and as per usual, it's done that thing of going straight to, and now it's saying it's busy because it's connected to the camera, connected to the laptop. So I was going to do an auto rotate, but it's stopped me from doing that. Oh, thank you. I wasn't going to talk about my birthday because I'm 3015 today. So, um, <laughs> I haven't got anywhere to go. I'm just trying to see what. Stay all afternoon. Wicked. Excellent. <laughs> I've got to go see my boys this afternoon. That's not going to happen. But I would love to stay here with you this afternoon. It's a shame we can't kind of vocalise together because it's nice. The comments are great, but I'd love to have kind of like an interactive thing with everybody. That'd be awesome. Um, right. So let's just go back to utility. And move your comments out of the way because it's stopping me from doing what I want to do. Quick preview. Right. So here we are. Oh, why can't I turn that round? Turn the live on. There we go. Ta da! Right. So this isn't going to be my, my best product shot in the world, ladies and gents, but it is going to be a quickie. I had to crowbar some food in somewhere along the line. You know me. So just as an aside, while I'm sorting this out, in two weeks' time, 11th of Feb, I am back. If um, Castle, if, uh, sorry, <laughs> if Camera Web will have me, um, I'm going to be back and we are going reflective product photography so there's and it's going to have a bit of a theme based upon the date that's coming up that week nudge nudge wink wink say no more love you love you love you and all that so that's not the cleanest capture in the world but you get the idea so i'm just going to come up a little bit like that so you've got with coffee And can't work out why that's not turning, guys. It's um, it's portrait on my screen, but not on yours. So we are 2.8. I'm going to bring the ISO up because that's just not enough. I want a little bit more depth of field. So we're at 3.5. My focus point is the coffee cup on the front. As we can see, that is so dark, it's not true. I'm going to keep the ISO at 200. I don't want to go any lower, any higher than 200. I'm going to say we're 1 25th per second. I'm going to take it straight down to a 60th, which is one stop off. I think I'm then going to take it down again to about a 30th, which is two stops. And when you look at that, we're not getting what I want. Great. So take it down to a 15th. That's looking a little better. So let's just go to preview so you can see exactly what I've done. Oh, and it's upright. Right, that is bleached out to high heaven, isn't it? So take the ISO back down to... Let's do it in... Here, take the ISO back down to low, back to 50. I'm going to a 4 and that's going to come back up to, I think I'm going to go 25th and see where we get from there. So let's have a look. Still a little dark. So I'm going to get my bits of whiteboard. And you can't see what I'm doing because I'm on the, on the EOS rather than on the other one, but I'm just going to get that little bit of whiteboard in there and I'm just going to bounce it so that put it directly opposite, he says knocking over the boomer, directly opposite the coffee cups. And that's just going to sit on the vinyl background so it lodges in and it's just going to bounce a bit more light back in. Let's have a look at that. 
well over. Shutter, see, this is what we do. So shutter speed, do you know what? Aperture priority, let's make this simple on ourselves, shall we? There we go, so let's just go back in. Are you still with me, guys, have I lost you? I just saw my mum's name pop up. <laughs> Hello, mum. <laughs> I swore I'd never say that. Um, right, where are we? That's throwing me off completely. Your mother pops in and causes all sorts of trouble. Right, um, aperture priority, that's fine. Let's go on to quick preview. Shot. Okay, it hasn't made much difference. But what we're going to do, I would put a spoon in there, but do you know what? With the fact I'm doing reflective in a couple of weeks with you guys, I don't really want to over tweak it. So I want it more. So here, I want it more light. So I'm going to, going to overexpose it by a stop. Yeah. And see how we do. That's a bit better. I'm going to go two stops. Let's do stop and two thirds. Other function preview. Well, that's quite nice. I also could do it down, but you know, we're slightly over in the background, but sun's just popped out. But this is kind of the thing when you're working with. Um, daylight, available light that is ever changeable, then you're going to get these moments where it just drops you. You can't see that, can you? Right, okay. I'm going to show you now my screen and you can see what I've just shot. There we go. So that is what we've just shot. Okay. Hide a high key in the background. If we had a bit more time, I'd be putting uh, some blackboard on the, as we're looking at it on the left hand side of the cafeteria in the background, just to, um, just to give a bit, block a little bit of light coming in there so it's not so overexposed. Piece of blackboard, probably, I don't know, a4 size and I put it literally on the left hand side of that outer frame so it blocked that light going in there so you didn't get so much of a highlight on that. But yeah, um, just a quick extra bit in a good excuse me to have a cup of coffee and a piece of cake later. Um, very good friend of mine who lives around the corner from us um, made these for me so thank you Lou, you're a star. But yeah, so that is what we've done. I'm gonna grab back the stool, do my Valdenican bit again. Come back to that uh, camera, mark three. And you're back to my ID mug. Right, so I'm going to put the laptop on my lap. Funny, that's what you meant to do with that. I'm going to unplug the EOS. I'm going to unplug that because I don't need that. That reminds me. It's time to put the... <laughs> so I've got my laptop in front of me. Are there any questions about what we've done? Um, yeah. Uh, so let's have a look. So, Paul, Nick, excellent. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Jenny. Yeah, do you know what? I do use um, the Neo. Um, used it last time I did a live with guys at Canberra World, and I fell in love with it. I use it, to be honest with you, if I'm out on location, it's a very quick, easy bit of kit to set up and use. Um, I love it. Absolutely love it. It's a good comp. It's a good location better kit if you have the batteries for it they're not cheap but they they're worth every penny um can't believe how simple it is to get fab shots like that 
going to have to get cake and brew after. Stuart, my friend, do it. If we were closer, I'd drop you a cupcake, cupcake over, but it wouldn't be judged as uh, essential travel. <laughs> it's definitely good final shot. What are your final settings? As I couldn't see in the intro. Final settings were, hang on, I will tell you. Uh, came to a daily bridge. You might lose me for a second. So 28th, no, that's 28th of November, Paul. Should be showing up in, move that. Do you know what? I'll post them along with the final picture later because I cannot get to the, um, the actual metadata for the images now. So I will post the two final images we've done today, a little bit of background stuff, hopefully. And yes, but in the meantime, does anybody have any further questions? So that was Stephanie. I will deal with that, Stephanie. Panic not. So I'm, ah, right. This is the thing. I've been doing this over the last few lives I've done with Canon, and I've set up a hashtag for you guys. And the hashtag is CWPGP, so Camera World. Paul Gregory Photography. Um, any images that you shoot off the back, inspired by or off the back of what I've done today with you, I think, oh, I could try that, I could do this, I do it different like this. Love to see them. If you pop them on your um, on your socials, you know, tag me at PGP Food Photography, tag Camera World, but if you put the hashtag CWPGP. That's C-W-P-G-P. Then I'll keep an eye out for that on Insta and um, see where we go from there. Just it's nice to see when people go, wow, that was really cool. I enjoyed that. And then they take their own take on it and they pop it out there. So be it product photography, anything like that, be really good to see. Hey, <laughs> thank you, Camera World. Awesome. Yeah, C hashtag C-W-P-G-P. Sorry I didn't brief you on that beforehand. It just kind of came to me about an hour ago. Uh, <laughs> So yes, um, just have a quick look, just shows you don't need all that. Do you know what, um, Michelle, no, do you know what, I'm rocking a 5D Mark IV and I've got some lovely lenses that I've acquired over the years and through the jobs that I do I'm able to buy them which is great. My other half has got a 700D, she does a lot of um, uh, macro stuff with flowers and bits and pieces and she she tried a bit of uh food photography the other day when i was doing um a shoot for a client she said let's have a go so she got a 700 d out and a 18 to 135 and do you know what with the settings and so a little bit of guidance from me quality of stuff was fine you don't need two three four grand camera bodies you can do it with a 100D, you can do it with a, I don't know, a 350, 450D, 800D, whatever you happen to have knocking around, you can do it with a 7D, a 6D, you can do it with a G7X Mark III, yeah, anything that has manual control, manual exposure control, yeah, you're good as gold. So I would really encourage you to get, you know, to just have a go and share. Uh, feel free to follow me at PGP Food Photography um, and share stuff with me. Use the hashtag, yeah? Share with me, share with um, uh, the guys at Camera World. If you're really proud of it and you shot using Canon, tag Canon, you go into it, you know? It's always, uh, it's always good for them to see. And if you use the hashtag CWPGP, that'd be good. Right, it's gone one o'clock. I wasn't far off, was I, Camera World, about five minutes. Light is more important, understand. This is very true, Michelle. Um, very, very true. The light, photography, photo, photography, light. Once you understand light and control light, fantastic. I would have normally, if the sun was as bright as it was earlier, I would have had behind me in this window um, a very large scrim or diffuser just to soften the light coming up, coming through. But Murphy's Law, it was great, it was horrible, didn't think I'd need it, I didn't want to stop any more of that precious light that was out there coming through. When the sun came out thinking, oh, I wish I'd put a diffuser up there. But hey, it is what it is. A diffuser softens the light, it also stops a little bit of it coming through. It, it, cuts down the light level a little bit, but it softens the light coming through. I think we could be what we've done here. I'm happy with the result.
<laughs> Hi, Lisa. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, people use iPhones as well. It's a good shout, Paul. Really good shout. So, hashtag CWPGP. Anything you do in the next week or so off the back of what we've done today, anything, if I've inspired you, great. Post it, tag it, let um, Camera World and I see what's going on. We'd love to see it. Um, yeah, I will be here 12 to 1, I believe, 11th of February, um, to do reflective product photography we're going to have fun it's going to have a little bit of a romantic theme to it because of what's coming up a couple of days afterwards but yeah uh, 12 to 1 Thursday the 11th of February camera world please tell me I've got that right <laughs> and um, I will see you then hopefully Every, I've seen lots of thank yous here. Thank you very much indeed. Right, I'm going to leave you to your afternoon. I'm going to have this coffee and a bit of my cake. Um, look after yourselves, guys. Stay safe. Take care. And I'm looking forward to seeing any of any work that you do off the back of this. Hashtag CWPGP. Um, lots of love, guys. Take care. See you soon. Ciao for now. And I always do this. I do that, and I haven't got the button to switch it. So I'm off. Take care. All the best.